Hey there you guys, it's your girl Kristen here. I'm a licensed esthetician, an educator, mentor, a YouTuber, and a mom. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And if you're new here, make sure to comment below, introduce yourself, hit that subscribe button if you're an esthetician or an aspiring esthetician. We are growing and flowing. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers and I literally was laying in bed last night just mind blown because of how much growth this channel has had, how much community we've been able to create, not only through my YouTube channel, but my Instagram. I love being able to come back here, and this is all where it started. And I think the last topic I talked to you guys about was how to make 20K as an esthetician a month. Be sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Get inspired, get motivated. It's 2022, we're halfway through the year, guys. So if you've been able to check off some goals this year already, comment below, I really wanna know what you've been able to accomplish, and also maybe what you're hoping to accomplish the rest of this year. As much as we are always hustling, we're grinding, we're trying to get to a better income, a better lifestyle, we're trying to service more clients, we really do have to kind of reel ourselves back in sometimes and that's why I wanted to make this video. I know I've gotten a handful of comments before, um, especially from you moms out there. How do you maintain your, your work life and your, your personal life? Like how does that all work and how do you still pay attention to your, your family? Don't click out of this if you're not a parent just yet. That's why I did name this video work-life balance tips for estheticians. These are tips that are going to be relevant to any walk of life. Maybe you're a solo esthetician running your own business. This is going to be even more crucial because you're the boss. You're the one who is dictating your schedule. You're the one who is dealing with all the ins and outs of the business constantly. I wanted to share these tips with you. I've really taken the time to think about this and I hope that this helps. So if any of that interests you, make sure you grab your notebook and your pen and continue watching. Alright y'all, let's dive right into this. I also wanted to mention in this video, I'm going to be announcing the giveaway winner from my last video where I talked about my Amazon must-haves for the summer. We did a huge giveaway in that video, $500 gift card, so I'm really excited to be able to announce who's going to win that. So without further ado, let me take a little sip of water before we get into this. because we're about to have some real talk here. From the outside, like on YouTube and Instagram, it's really easy for all of us to show the world that we're, we're good, we're, we're positive, we're staying focused, but like we're human at the end of the day. I even still have moments, a, a lot, where I have to reel myself back in and say, oh my gosh, like I need to get into a better headspace, I need to, uh, you know, not be so like work, 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 just going, 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 going. I think in order to give your clients and possibly what students or employees, whoever you're working with, the best version of yourself is to love yourself, is to increase your own self-worth, is to feel good. We have different senses, right? We have our sight, we have our smell, we have our taste, we have touch. We have all these senses we're born with, but I also believe that our emotions are one of those senses, like a sixth sense, so you could say. I think if you really listen to that sense constantly, like I ask myself every day, how are we feeling today? And I really have been in tune with that. And whenever I'm feeling like uh, down, dreary, I do these things that really help me to like get back to that feeling good, feeling motivated place and genuinely feeling that way. You know, you don't want to slap a happy face on things. You don't want to just go around and act like everything's okay. Hopefully these tips are going to help you not have to get to that point um, because if you're implementing these things like regularly, then you're hopefully not going to get to that point where you're feeling so overwhelmed that you just like want to stop and you want to quit. I'm not even telling you that I'm perfect at this because I definitely have my moments where I'm like, uh, so there's certain things in your life and try to figure out what those little signs are for you. What is it for you that maybe you notice that starts to happen when you start getting off balance? So the first tip is going to be to remember and declare your why. I've talked to you guys about this before on my channel. I'm here to remind you because we forget a lot that our why is what drives us. Our why is what makes the how easy. I grew up with a single dad 
and you know thankfully now my mom is back in the picture and we've we've really like had a great relationship now i did a lot of sports growing up and so i remember specifically this one time where i was doing like gymnastics and i was maybe like seven or eight years old and there was like a recital and you know all the parents were there like watching their kids and like my dad couldn't make it and i remember just feeling so just sad and like why and i was upset and it's like that feeling still carries with me and i'm like i never want my kids to feel like i wasn't there for them and and i'm not even like saying it was my dad's fault because you know he's a single parent like sometimes he could he just couldn't make it it wasn't because he didn't want to be there my motivation has always been to be a present parent to be an active parent and not be just working 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 that being in the core of my why um, and also to have uh, financial freedom that's always been something that I have had my eyes on since I mean I think I was like 20 years old uh, because I did grow up with a lot of financial hardship so when it comes to kind of making some of these decisions like your schedule or making time for yourself for some reason there's a lot of guilt associated with that you're like oh man well I should be taking clients I should be doing this I should be doing that why do we get, give ourselves such guilt trips when our tank is on E or it's getting to E we don't sit in our car and look at our gas tank and be like why are you empty that gas meter is there for a reason I notice that when that starts happening I'm like ooh, I gotta I gotta fill my tank again I gotta fill my tank again the way that I fill my tank again is so being really good about that self-care we we are in the industry of self-care and we're preaching constantly to our clients like you need to come in every four to six weeks for a facial you need to relax you need to do this you need to do that yourself be on top of your skincare routine I just showed you guys my nighttime skincare routine and I honestly do that every single day knowing like hey I'm taking care of myself and I read my book and I just I stick to that little routine that makes me feel good so whatever routine it is for you at nighttime or in the mornings um, stick to that don't fall off of that because that's what's gonna keep you feeling good another thing that I like to do especially in the mornings is I meditate whether it's five or ten minutes I set aside time to meditate so I put on some like meditative like music I can actually I can link it down below for you guys if you'd like I just I put it on and I lay on my bed don't lay on your bed if you're gonna fall asleep but if you know you're not gonna fall asleep then lay down and just close your eyes and focus on your breathing don't think about you know if you start noticing your mind is thinking about 10,000 things like start to count your breaths and just be very intentional about listening to your body clearing your mind listening to the music maybe meditating can do well for you like near water or somewhere soothing in nature get outside maybe that's your form of meditation make sure that you're alone and you are able to clear your mind and just honestly let yourself get back to that balance I mean on average we have 60,000 thoughts a day and I'm sure us women have even more so <laughs> take that five to ten minutes a day to really just practice meditation and also throw in some visualization in there while you're meditating picture your dream home picture your dream vacation whatever it is that makes you smile and feel good and that's such a great way to start your day also self-care can be in the form of like getting a massage regularly I ended up hiring a mobile massage therapist who has come here a handful of times she's gonna be coming to my home next and I have her come every six to eight weeks also have finally started making time to get my nails done again so pre-book your appointments stick to them don't cancel them make the time for them I get facials regularly now thank thankfully that I have Kristen here yeah just little things that make you feel good because you know I know for me when my nails aren't done or my hair isn't done or you know I'm feeling ugh, like not so cute I don't I don't give my best self honestly I think that goes for almost everybody on this planet the next thing I want to talk to you about is when it comes to your business and how you can create some work-life balance with your schedule don't open up your schedule you know Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then one that's gonna make you look so available that people are just gonna be like oh well she's free anytime and I can just come whenever no like make your schedule limited give yourself like your self-care and your time to do other tasks because there's things like inventory marketing your website instagram like every all the little like details of your business need attention as well so you need to set aside time to do those things and your self-care and your family and work so work 
working on clients needs to also be compartmentalized and you need to make sure you're not overdoing it. And so I encourage you to learn to say no because you're gonna have clients that are like, hey, can I come in at 6 a.m.? Can I come in at 9 p.m.? And I'm like, heck no. I mean, thankfully, I, I feel like my kid has been kind of my excuse to say no, but it shouldn't take having a kid to say no. You should respect your life balance, give your clients a set structured availability and so that you can have time to do other things that you need to get done. People are, are more than understanding, you know, especially as a sole esthetician, I think people coming to your business are gonna be more understanding of that because you're not this big franchise that has like thousands of dollars just being like poured in. People understand that you're the backbone of the business, you're the manager, you're the janitor, you're <laughs> the marketer, you're the esthetician, you're the scheduler. So there's a lot of hats that we wear and so you need to learn to say no and make sure that you create a structured availability for yourself and a time for you to completely tune out. Put away your work phone. You know, don't go on social media for at least one day a week. I make that day for me either Saturday or Sunday where I just, I post that one thing like in the morning and one thing at night on my Instagram and the rest of the day I'm like literally just honed in and focused on my kid and whatever activity that we're doing. You're not answering texts, you're not answering emails, nothing. Like, give yourself that time to just completely disconnect. It's not gonna kill anyone to disappear for one day to just focus on yourself and your family. Another thing that I, I find is helpful is when we wake up, I notice a lot when I would wake up, the first thing I would do was like get on my phone, check my Instagram and check my email and my text messages. And I have intentionally stopped doing that. When I first open my eyes, I get out of bed and I start my skincare routine and I get ready for the day before I even look at my phone. I mean, I'll, I'll put on music. I don't try to look at texts or emails until I am here in the studio, safe and sound, not while I'm driving. Clock in for work and that's when you can look at your phone, unless like if you see it's an emergency, if someone that day cancels or whatever. But like other than that, most of the time, it's not an emergency. It's not something you need to answer right away or look at. And it honestly delays you. For me, I struggle sometimes with running late. I'm not, not for clients, but like in general. And it's because like I'm on my phone, I'm checking this, I'm checking that. And it's like, no, you need to put that away and make sure you're on time that you're, you're starting your day off um, in a productive way. Also learning to say no helps you not emulate this this attitude of desperation. I know some of you guys, maybe you're starting out in your business and you're like, well, th that's a client. If the client wants to come in at 9 p.m., like I have to take them, I have to take them. No, you don't have to take them. There's certain occasions where you can kind of like tweak things for a client that normally can come in when you're available, but there's those exceptions. You kind of need to train your clients how to treat you and how to respect your time. So I think it's important to stick to that, not have this desperate mindset of like, no, I need to be available for everyone all the time. No, you don't, trust me. I've booked and busy, I've built you know, a pretty decent business and platform and I still have the same, almost the same hours that I've had since I started. Now when I get cancellations, I always ask myself like, Okay, before I go and fill this appointment with a person, is there other things that I need to get done? Things in my personal life, things for the business, and almost always, I'm like, yeah, actually I could use that hour to get some other things done that are that are just as important as having a client. So I don't always go and post like my availability right when someone reschedules or cancels because you don't wanna neglect the other parts of your life or your business. One last tip for you guys before we get into my closing thoughts is to maintain a gratitude journal. I know that that seems kind of like, okay, why is writing in a gratitude journal gonna help me have work-life balance? When you're feeling overwhelmed and you're thinking about all the like negative things that are happening and why this isn't happening and why that isn't happening, whatever, you know, headspace you're in, like writing a gratitude journal every single day puts things into perspective. We take for granted things so much and I, I know one of my parent classes that I've been taking for my son, um, they talked a lot about mindfulness and when you're more aware of everything around you and the littlest details, like like almost like a toddler-like mindset because toddlers don't have a concept of yesterday or tomorrow. So they're living in the present. He notices all the littlest teeny things. He, he always picks up like these little teeny like objects off the ground. I'm like, how did you see that? It's almost a refreshing reminder that like, we need to have the mindset sometimes of a young child. 
recognize and appreciate all the little things that are around us. We're so lucky to have a business. We're so lucky to have one client. You know, I know some of you guys are like, oh, I only have two clients a week. I only have four clients a week. Well, gosh darn, thank God for those four clients. Those four people that have put their money in your hands so that they can get a service from you. And then guess what? Maybe those four people were turned into eight people because they're gonna go and refer someone to you. So don't look at one client being like, oh, it's only one client. You know, let's, let's practice some gratitude, get a journal, make it very intentional every day to write in there. It's gonna ultimately make you feel better. It's gonna help you to appreciate things more around you. And then when you're getting in those funks, it's gonna reel you back in. I'm telling you this to encourage you to keep going. Don't quit. I've had to make the tough choice of reducing my hours just slightly. And that to me was a little scary because I was like, oh my gosh, they're already pressing me for like evening time slots. It's just made me more, vo more motivated to keep working hard because my kid's about to be in preschool soon and that's gonna be a whole different schedule. I'm just sticking to what I've been doing and staying motivated and I have to remind myself like that's why I got into this. That's why I wanted to have the freedom of my dictating my own schedule. And I'm telling you guys, if you keep going, keep building, keep grinding, keep working, you will get to that point. Like, make sure your tank isn't getting to that E level and get it to go back up to full whenever possible because um, People will feel your energy. Now, on a lighter note, um, let's get into this giveaway winner, okay? Stay tuned. Hey you guys, I'm here in my room and I just entered in all of the names, the 133 entries for the Amazon $500 gift card giveaway winner. And I'm really stoked to be able to pick this winner. Before we dive into that, again, I just wanna say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your comments, your encouragement, your love, your support. It does not go unnoticed. And I'm telling you, sometimes I'll feel down and like, why am I doing this? And then I just go and read your guys' comments and it just makes me feel like, a million bucks so thank you so much you inspire me as much as maybe I inspire you and so we are in this together we are a team and I am just so excited to be able to give this amount of money from Amazon which I feel like is pretty life-changing like you can buy a lot of things for $500 so I really hope that this is a blessing to somebody and without further ado let's pick that winner got my laptop here and here's all of those names floating in there let's go ahead and Spin this baby. Let's go. They call her Queen Underscore. Woo! Congratulations. I'm assuming your name is Queen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did that entry on Instagram. So thankfully you did that extra entry because that is what got you that $500 gift card. Thank you guys again so much for participating, for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, to be a part of this community. I'm gonna go ahead and finish editing this video. And I'll see you guys back here on Monday for a new one. And until then, I love you, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.